Hey guys, so today we're going to do a fun little bit manipulation problem and the problem for today is that we're going to try and find the number of ones in the binary representation of a number. So we have a couple examples here that you can see. This should be pretty straightforward, you know, like binary, the binary representation, representation of two is just one zero, right? And three is one one. Sorry, it should be a B there for binary. B. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to, there are not really any questions we need to ask for this problem, but this is pretty straightforward what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, there's nothing that we really need to clarify, so I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm just going to dive right into how am I going to think about this problem. So. What I'm going to do is think about this in simpler terms. So I'm just going to say, I want to go through the number. I'm going to try and go through the number bit by bit and see if the bit is zero or one. And I'm just going to sum up. I'm going to go through bit by bit and I'm going to sum up the bits that are zero and the bits that are one. So now that brings us to the question of how am I going to extract the individual bits from our number? So what, I'm going to do is make this slightly simpler and I'm just going to say that I'm only going to extract the bit from the, I'm only going to look at the lowest order bit in the number at any given time. So for example, let's say that I have this number, I will just say first look at the lowest order bit, which is this one. And then if I want to look at, if I want to only look at the lowest order bits, I can just shift this to the right by one. And now the lowest order bit is the next value. So it's this zero. And then I'm going to shift it again and I can keep doing that. And that way I know that I'm going to go through all of the bits in the number, but I can just look at the lowest order bit on each iteration. So what I'm going to, I'll start and I'll just, we can, this is going to be just a, uh, We'll return an int and we'll call it just ones and it's going to take in an int x and so all we want to do is say well we need a sum because we're going to need to count the number so int sum equals one equals zero and now we're going to do a while loop and we just want to say we're going to be shifting x each time by one. So eventually it's going to get to zero and then we know that there are no more ones in the binary representation. So let's go ahead and say while x is greater than zero. And now in here and then in here we're going to calculate the sum and then we're going to return sum, right? But what we need to do here is we need to calculate, we need to add one to the sum if the lowest order bit is one and we want to add zero to the sum if the lowest order bit is zero. So there are two ways that I can think of that we can do this. So the first one is pretty straightforward. It's we're going to mod the number by two. So by modding it by two, we're basically saying is the number even or odd? And we know that if a number is even, then it's going to have, then it's divisible by two and it's going to mod of that well that number mod two is going to be zero and then there's going to be a zero in the lowest order bit so we could just say for example sum plus equals x mod two and then of course i forgot here we need to do x shifted by one so this is just like a shift equals one and we could do, so we could do this x mod two and that's fine, but there's actually a slightly better way that we can do it. And what that is, is we could, rather than doing the mod, we can just do a bitwise and with one. And so doing a bitwise and with one, it's going to be, I mean, we can look at this, right? Like, so bitwise, like the one is just going to be this. And then we could have a number that's going to be like this. And so if we bitwise and them together, then we know that 
any one where they're both one is going to be one and every, any other one is zero. So obviously we get all of them cancel out except for this last one where it's one. And so by doing this bitwise and we can get that we can we get one if the lowest order bit is one and we get zero if the lower order bit is zero. And so this is really all there is to it. So we're just going to sum this up and then get our response. So let's just test uh, an example or two to make sure that this does what we expect. So let's test on say x equals six. So six is bit what is one one zero. So we're going to say x equals six. So the sum is equal to zero and then x is greater than zero. So sum is plus equals x mo uh, x bitwise and one. So here we have our bitwise one. And so we can see obviously that the result here is going to just be zero. So we're going to add nothing to the sum and then we're going to shift this by one. So we now have sum equal sum still equals zero and x is now going to be we're going to remove one bit there so we now have x is equal to three right so x, three is greater than zero and now we're going to do the bitwise and and now we get this as our result because we see that they're both one so we're going to add one and then we're going to shift by one so we're going to remove that we're going to now and them again and we get one again so we're going to add to our sum and now sum is two and we shift it again and now our number is zero x is zero so we're going to break out of the loop and now sum is equal to two so we return sum and that's what we expect and so that's pretty straightforward and the last thing we should do before we're totally done is just think about what the runtime for this problem is going to be. So this is a pretty easy one to think about, but it's good to you know, know how to figure this out just in case. So for our while loop, the most times we're going to go through is the number of bits that make up our integer, right? So, or in this case, it's an integer. So the runtime is actually capped because we know that an integer is a fixed number of bytes. But let's for our general algorithm we know that it's the runtime is proportional to the number of bits in a number and so the number of bits to represent x is log x right so we know that our runtime in this case is going to be big o of log x so pretty easy to think about pretty simple problem hopefully that went okay for you and I will talk to you again soon.